Hello in the next episode. In today's video I'm going to repair Nintendo Switch OLED, which came in for the OLED screen connector repair. So let's have a look at it. Alright, so here is a message from my customer. I did a successful installation of the Instinct V6S uh, chip upon reconnecting the digitizer ribbon cable. I had lost the touchscreen function, however the display was working perfectly. Upon examining the inside of the connector, I noticed that I broke a pin in the digitizer screen connector, probably by forcing it back in when I first reassembled the console. I removed the original and made one attempt to replace it. I removed the unsuccessful broken attempt. I included in the package two times 42 pin replacement connectors, notes, Instinct was fully functional with micro SD card setup. I had to resolder the D point and it has worked since then. How reliable the joint is, I'm not sure. I don't believe any other components were desoldered during the heating process. However, the unit has not been tested since these attempts. I apologize for the residual flux and mess. I gave up on this product and decided to send it to you after watching your YouTube channel. Thank you in advance. All right, so thank you for that. So this is going to be very probably very short video on my channel because you know we don't have full console. We just got some bits, we got some screws, which I don't need. I got a few, you know, the OLED screens to test it. So let's have a look at it. And yes, the connector. Wow. You know, this connector doesn't look good. Let's just make a closer look at it. This connector doesn't look good. Probably because it's uh, full of flux. What can I say about this wire's thickness? They are too thick. And they can damage some of the parts. But you know, uh, I'm not going to do anything about it. I just need to do my job. So I just need to replace this connector. I just need to solder this connector back and make sure the touch screen and the, you know, the picture is good. Yeah, but there's a lots of flux, and lots of flux around. Right, so normally what I always do, I hit from the bottom, but you know, in order to hit from the bottom, I would need to remove the that zero adapter from here because I don't want to solder it permanently. We know that it doesn't work if you solder it permanently. The problem will be with the NAND IC connection to the motherboard, so this is not a good solution. But this time I will hit from the top because you know, normally this plastic they can resist the temperature up to 300 degrees. You know, above this temperature it will start melting so we want to avoid that so i'm going to try from the top and using the lowest temperature i can so i would suggest just less than 300 degrees like 280 yes 280 should be right but in order to do this i just need to remove the solder from here from the parts i need to clean the parts and also i need to apply fresh solder low melting solder flux and I need to get rid of this because I can see the solder mask was used here. So let's go under the microscope. All right, so what we have here, we've got some, like I said, the solder mask here. So now I know why someone has used the solder because the board surface was scratched and he secured that board with the solder but you know i need the surface flat all right so i just need to apply the fresh solder low melting solder okay so now i'm going just to remove the the solder mask okay it should be right okay i will clean that all right so i will just apply the fresh fresh flux and hot air like i have said less than 300 
going to be 290 degrees. Like I said, you know, I always do this job from the bottom. I don't want to spend, you know, more time than I supposed to. It's going to be easier if I do this from the top. Alright, so everything looks fine for me. This one is a little bit burnt, but it, it doesn't affect the normal working, so it's working fine. So now I just need to clean it, because here we've got some frogs and I need to clean it. So I'm going to use my sponges with isopropyl alcohol, but now I'm just going to use hot air, 140 degrees. Alright, so now when it's warm up just need to use my sponge with the isopropyl alcohol all right so here is my OLED screen it's in good working condition So my customer included, you know, the micro SD card and game card reader with already micro SD card inside. So I'm just going to plug it in. Let's power this on. All right, so we have no signs of life, nothing. Let's check the voltage. The battery is completely drained. All right, but I've got another battery. I've got a fully charged battery, so let's try my one. And let's power this on. And now we can see we've got light. And we've got a picture. But as you can see here, this picture is no good. If I press it, It's doing like this. So we've got some glitches. All right, so I think I'm going to do this with another method. But this time I'm going to remove the that zero adapter. Hopefully it will be removed easily. So 400 degrees from the bottom.
the same 400 degrees So let's try now. So we will see now the difference. Okay, so the battery is flat, so I'm going to connect my battery. All right, so now let's check this. All right, so at this moment looks good. I'm just going to disconnect the battery and use the SD card reader. All right, so let's go to the controllers and sensors, test input devices, test touch screen. All right, this looks good. All right, so as you could see, I had to replace it two times because the first one was the first method. Sometimes it doesn't work. But the second method that I, that I had to uh, hit it up from the bottom, it is one of the best methods. And it was good. As you can see, I've tested everything, the touchscreen functions, the screen functionality, everything is good. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you next time.